She's got BDE. Anybody know what that means? I call it big DeSantis energy. He's got the same kind of BDE that President Trump has. Well, if you don't know what BD actually stands for, feel free to Google it. That was Trump-backed Arizona candidate for Governor Carrie Lake energizing MAGA Republicans in their first big rally since the FBI search on former President Trump's Florida home as she and headliner Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are aiming to rebrand the grand old party. CNN's Kyung La talks with Republicans in Arizona now to find out if the Trump wing's rambunctious language will sway or alienate voters. East meets West in a show of a united Republican front. The headliner of this Arizona rally, Florida governor and possible 2024 hopeful Ron DeSantis. From the beaches of Florida to the deserts of Arizona, November 8th, 2022 is going to be the day that America fights back. To energize this Phoenix crowd, DeSantis turned his political fire to the news in his state. The FBI search of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. They're enforcing the law based on who they like and who they don't like. That is not a republic. Well, it may be it's a banana republic when that happens. Echoed by Republican nominee for Arizona Governor Carrie Lake, heavy on grievance, light on facts. And then these people sent politically motivated federal agents to President Donald Trump's home and raided it. How dare they? This is the first large political rally since the Mar-a-Lago search. How much is that affecting Republicans who are going to be voting this year in the midterms? Well, I hope it's a lot. I hope it ignites people, gets them out there, and they want to help support the Republican ticket. After what happened on Monday, we have to show our support for the president, the real president anyway. Here in Arizona, where Trump's 2020 election lie still thrives in a big swath of the GOP, his endorsed candidate swept in the state's primary. Carrie Lake defeated a Republican backed by former Vice President Mike Pence and the establishment. The Republican Party isn't your great-great-grandfather's party anymore. U.S. Senate candidate Blake Masters is also Trump-endorsed. It will be Arizona first and America first all the way. The proof is in the primary, say voters in this crowd, that the more centrist Arizona Republican Party of John McCain is gone. We feel McCain is a total traitor. I believe he was a rhino. In this theater, party unity and its success in November is under the banner of Trump. I spoke with the Democratic nominee for governor here in the state of Arizona, Katie Hobbs, and she disagrees with this philosophy of running to Trump in November as the ticket to win. One third of registered voters in the state are independents. And Hobbs believes by catering to them, talking to them directly, is a way to win in this battleground state. Jake. All right, Kyung La, thank you so much. Let's bring in our panel. And Brendan, let me start with you, because if Arizona's election-denying Republican gubernatorial candidate, Carrie Lake, and the Republican Secretary of State candidate, if they had held office in 2020, they say they would have decertified the results and overturned the election in favor of Trump, even though that's not how the voters of Arizona voted. And in fact, according to a Washington Post analysis, quote, across the battleground states that decide the 2020 vote, candidates who deny the legitimacy of that election have claimed nearly two thirds of GOP nominations for state and federal offices with authority over, Republic, uh, over elections. You're a Republican who supports democracy and election results. Um, how do you respond to this? This has always been the biggest threat. You know, we talk about the voting laws in Georgia and Texas and a lot of people had issues with those. This is always the threat. The people who are actually in charge, who have to sign off on elections, can are, are election deniers. That's the big problem. And you, you, it, you're in a situation here where you would think that in a general election, maybe you would temper some of this, that maybe you were just trying to get through a primary. But it's clearly these people truly believe this stuff, and that's what's scary about it. Uh, and some of the Democrats uh, have been accused of playing with fire by supporting these more extremist Republican candidates hoping that will give them a, a leg up. We saw that play out uh, in Michigan with Congressman Peter Meyer. Uh, what do you think? Can, can the Democrats say that this is actually an existential threat to the country, but we're going to play cute with it by nominating, by helping to nominate some of these 
election denying Republicans? Yeah, I think it's quite dangerous because it's not just what happens in 2022. They're laying the foundation for the next presidential election in 24 because these people, if they win, they will be the ones that have to decide whether or not to certify the next election. So we are in an existential crisis. We cannot allow people who will break the law, who will lie, who believe a lot, the big lie, um, to to be elected. And I don't think, I think Democrats could win even if they were, had moderates that they were running against um, in the Republican Party. And Francesca, the Washington Post is also reporting that a group of lawyers aligned with Trump led a team of computer experts to obtain data from election software as part of a broad, organized, multi-state uh, effort. This is after the 2020 election. You covered Trump. Are you surprised by how well organized some of this was? Well, we know that uh, after the election that they were in many of these states trying to do what the Washington Post described there. And we also know that that Republicans have been trying to get in their own people in some of these states following that election because they do think they could be decided at that that level in the, the 2024 election. And this is why uh, those groups have been so focused on getting in Republican attorney general that will be able to uh, take it to the courts after the election, if uh, not just in 2022, but in 2024, potentially also if they don't get the result that they want. So, Casey, you were in uh, Wyoming a couple weeks ago. I was there last week, although for, for fun. <laughs> slightly different. For capacity. fun, not for I'm work. I'm jealous of your trip. <laughs> um, so, but, but Liz Cheney obviously is running for re-election, and she is facing a she very is. strong challenge uh, from a Republican named uh, Harriet Hageman. A University of Wyoming poll found Cheney trailing by nearly 30 points last week. Last, uh, last week, 30 points. CNN has reported that CNN, Cheney's obviously looking ahead to 2024, potentially. Yeah. Um, is there enough appetite, you think, for an anti-Trump Republican presidential candidate, uh, more so perhaps than, than one in Wyoming for Congress? I think it's a really tricky path forward for Liz Cheney. I think that they're very aware that she's unlikely to win uh, next Tuesday, but I think that they're basically... I mean, she, she, I think she deeply believes that it is actually worth what, what has happened. It is worth losing her seat and that that is what makes her different from so many other Republicans in the Trump era who just were not willing to potentially give up their own power in service to a greater good being the country and, and democracy. And, you know, I think she's really taking a stand on that. I mean, when I was out there, I heard her talk to voters about it. It wasn't just in interviews with the national media. It was what she was saying to her constituents there on the ground. But you know, it's a tough path forward. I mean, as you know, and I think everyone at this table knows, running in the Republican primary on a Liz Cheney platform, it's a really tough sell. And, and yeah. on that subject, I think there were a lot of Republicans who didn't support Trump, but were hopeful that they could have the Trump policies in an aggressive candidate in Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. But DeSantis uh, is disappointing a lot of those Republicans because he is on stage with all of these election deniers, supporting them as much as he can, Carrie Lake, uh, and Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania, he's doing an event with him too as well. Uh, it so is, yeah, it, it is the Trump party. Whether you have Trump or not, they're all imitating how he did. And it's, it's the lesson that they learned from him is that you don't need to appeal to the middle anymore. If you turn out base Republicans, you play to the base every step of the way, there's a path to victory. I think that's very short-sighted. I don't think that's a good long-term play, but it's what every Republican across uh, the country is, is trying to emulate. Now, is there a path for a Liz Cheney to broaden us back out to a traditional conservative party? I hope so, but I, I don't know. I, it, I really doubt it. Is there even a path, though, at this point for Ron DeSantis? If Donald Trump runs, you may have seen the morning consult poll that showed that now 58 percent of Republican voters said that they would back Trump. And this is after the FBI search. Well, yeah, his, his numbers actually, went up. His, yeah. yeah, his numbers actually went up. And Trump world says, see, we're consolidating support. And it went up at the expense of Ron DeSantis, who went down by 5 percent in that particular Poll. So Republican strategists are telling me that they see that the pathway is actually narrowing for Ron DeSantis or anybody else after that. Do you see the Democrats meeting this moment in terms of they're trying to appeal to these voters in the, the middle, to trying to appeal to disillusioned Republicans such as my friend here to my right? I mean, <laughs> or, or, or do you think Democrats are struggling with that? I, I think they have to do a better job. You probably saw there was a memo that came out from the White House that they were going to go on a messaging tour. They have to talk to the entire base, not just black and brown voters, which they need to excite and they need to turn out because they will not win if people my age and younger and of color voters stay home. That is very clear. But they also have platforms that can, or policies that they can go to talk to suburban um, white moms, to talk to the rural farmer and not just say that we're doing something for you, but if you pick somebody else, they're not going to do anything for you. We are trying and we need to expand our margins. I don't think that they have landed the plane just yet on the messaging, but they do still have some time. Do you, do you agree? 
Uh, you, you know, I think the challenge uh, for Democrats here, I mean, one of the things that I think is on the flip side of what's happened over the past week in terms of Trump, I mean, it's put Trump front and center again yeah. in the midterms. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's good for Democrats, no matter which way you slice you it. You think? I, I, I do think that that's that certainly Democratic strategists I talk to would love for the midterms to be about Trump. And now they also have a bunch of policies that they can also yeah. sell on top of it. So midterms they're in a much stronger referendum than they were. On the president. Right. And for once, you might actually have a chance where it could be a bit of a choice. Yeah. You have between right. the January 6th hearings that are reminding people of what Donald Trump did, you have candidates across the country who are crazy, kooky. Um, and, and reminding people that the Republicans are not the same party that they used to be. And so I think that's where Democrats have a chance to actually have a choice election, which is what everybody always tries to have in midterms but can never pull off. And you right. throw abortion in there, and it and just lights like, the Democratic yeah. base up more. I guess we'll see. Thanks, one and all.